Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to watch this MI2 review before Mission Impossible Fallout arrives in cinemas. You keep calling me Dimitri. You really shouldn't. Hello everybody, I'm back with my retrospectives of all the Mission Impossible films. Today, I'm going to be going over MI2, also known as Mission Impossible 2, released in 2000 and this time directed by John Woo, who did films like Hard Boiled, Broken Arrow, and Face Off. Tom Cruise, of course, returns as Ethan Hunt. He's more of a shoot first, ask questions later type of Ethan Hunt in this film. We also have Du Gray Scott as the villain, Sean Ambrose and then Thandie Newton as Naya. In addition, we have Ving Rhames return as Luther Stickle, with John Paulson as Billy Baird, Richard Roxburgh as Hugh Stamp, and an appearance by Sir Anthony Hopkins as Commander Swanbeck. This is a very different Mission Impossible film. This is more of an action film, and while it may be the weakest out of the Mission Impossible film series, I think it's a strong film still. Here's how I describe it. It's not the best Mission Impossible film, but it's a good action film, if that makes any sense. I already went over this film on a previous review, but it was really early in my channel, and I didn't like that video, how it looks. So, I'm going to go over it briefly again. Mission Impossible 2 starts off, and we're in Sydney, Australia, in this film. We have this man who works for Biosite Pharmaceuticals. He created this virus called the Chimera, and an antivirus called Bellerophone. He basically wants to fly to Atlanta and get the virus out of the pharmaceuticals' hands. He's a friend of Ethan Hunt, and he knows Ethan Hunt as an alias Dimitri. So we get to see them on a plane, and we think it's Tom Cruise. No. In a brilliant sequence, they did this in one shot with a green screen, superimposed Tom Cruise's face on there, and we are introduced to Sean Ambrose. He impersonates Hunt and steals the virus. He's pretty much like an arms dealer. He wants to sell the virus to the highest bid, and he has the antivirus, so it's all a money-making scheme, which is pretty much what the pharmaceutical is going to use the virus for, and antivirus for, Anyway, the catch is, is that Sean Ambrose is a former IMF agent gone rogue. And this is the only installment in which Ethan Hunt is not thought to be a traitor or a rogue agent. He's actually on a regular mission. He has a team, his own team. The IMF, the CIA, nobody's trying to hunt him down in this one. So it makes it very different in that regard. But we have him after Sean Ambrose. So he gets a mission. They had Sean Ambrose impersonate Ethan Hunt. They couldn't reach him. And we have this glorious, glorious, like, climbing scene in Utah. Tom Cruise does 90% of his own stunts, and he climbed a mountain. Of course, that seems like nothing now compared to the Burj Khalifa and Ghost Protocol. But still, it was quite something when it first came out. I remember that being the teaser trailer to this movie. I didn't know there was going to be a Mission Impossible sequel. I was a huge fan of the first film. And my mom was watching Runaway Bride on VHS. And then I'm like, what is this? Oh my god, there's gonna be another Mission Impossible! And I was so excited to see that trailer. That is the opening of the film. And it gets this mission, it's crazy. It's not like the little message that self-destructs, no. There's a helicopter, they point, shoot a freaking rocket, and then this awesome scene happens where he puts these sunglasses. And it has a cool opening. Like, yeah, I love that opening. Despite it being really cheesy, this is an action movie. And John Woo does have a lot of homages and trademarks from his other films. Again, Ethan Hunt is a shoot first, ask questions later type of guy. Two guns, different stuff like that. And they actually deal more with martial arts than they do the gunplay, which is very different compared to other John Woo films. Anyway, he has to find this woman named Naya in Spain, and she's a cat burglar. So he thinks he's hiring her for her cat burglar, her thief skills. No, she's a former love interest of Sean Ambrose, and they must get her to get close to him and get information to see where he's bringing the virus to. So it's very complicated in that way. The first 30 minutes, we have like this romance with Naya and Ethan Hunt, and very much they try to make Ethan Hunt James Bond, even to the point where they rip off Goldeneye with a car scene. Him and Naya in that car chase was totally like 007 and Xena on a top in Goldeneye. They totally try to do that. And some of the plot elements with the virus kind of tip rip off the game Siphon Filter from the PlayStation 1. But regardless, it's pretty much a cat and mouse game between Sean Ambrose and Ethan Hunt, and he's worried about Naya. And I can understand them doing that. They try to personalize Ethan Hunt more. They try to give him something that's going to be uh, filled with emotional stakes rather than physical stakes or what's going on in the story. They try to make him a more three-dimensional character. 
I like what they attempted, but I think it was executed much better with Julia in Mission Impossible 3. Luther's back, and they have to break into Biosite and destroy the virus. And it takes a while for them to get there. There's like a lot of other random scenes, and supposedly this was a three-hour movie that was rated R. They had to trim it down and trim some of the violence out for a PG-13 rating. And yeah, originally Tom Cruise wanted Brian De Palma to come back. He declined, so we got John Woo. And again, they built a lot of the stunts for Tom Cruise, and I like that because it's stuff he could physically do. It makes it believable. And he has long hair. It's almost like, after he got his butt kicked by Jim Phelps, it's almost like, hey, I'm going to take it easy in life and become like an adrenaline junkie and get long hair. Learn Kung Fu. Why not? <laughs> but uh, I like the sequence at Biosite. Again, a homage to the first one. There's lasers, the gunplay. It has that very kind of 2000s, early millennium look to it, kind of like the Angelina Jolie Tomb Raiders. Uh, I, yeah, it kind of has like a cool vibe to it. It's a very different Mission Impossible. The first was a story. This is all action. It's a very different. Like, Mission Impossible 1 and 2 are as different from each other as any film could be. I love the stakes when Naya injects herself with the virus, although it would have been more simple to just destroy it. I don't know why it took Ethan Hunt that long, but it has a climatic third act. Probably the best motorcycle chase scene I've seen in any film. Rogue Nation goes up there. There's some other films like Matrix Reloaded, but damn, I love the action in this. So so many iconic shots, so many iconic moments. When uh, Hugh Stamp is there and you think that they killed Ethan Hunt, the first time you see this, you don't know if there's going to be any sequels, you think they shot Ethan Hunt. And then he notices it's a disguise mask, screams, and you just see Tom Cruise running. <laughs> Mission Impossible theme, rock theme. Oh yeah, speaking of which, the soundtrack is amazing. Limp Biscuit, take a look around. I Disappear by Metallica, the only film to have a Metallica song featured originally just for that film. They made that song specifically for this movie. First movie they did that on. And then we have Hans Zimmer do the score, which he has a lot of elements from Broken Arrow and Drop Zone in the soundtrack. But I love it. I love the chase and of course, yeah, that spoof on MTV. This mission just got a hell of a lot more impossible. The part where they're on the motorcycle, they joust, jump up, and tackle each other. Originally, there's supposed to be a scene where they go down, fight, and then go off the ledge. This just happens to be like you tackle each other and somehow go sideways. It's crazy. But the knife to the eye scene was real. It was on wires, so it stuck right before his eye, and that was crazy. I love the fighting there. I love how they go back and forth, how he gets hurt. It would have been cool if they kept his scar in the other movies. But overall, it's a generic action film. It has a happy ending, and it's hopeful for the future. Unfortunately, it took many years for a third film to come to reality, and I thought the Mission Impossible series was done with after two. Like, there was no Mission Impossible movies for a long time, not till 2006. And originally, they were going to have Naya return. They decided against that, and they did. They ended up going with a different story. They had David Fincher involved, other directors before J.J. Abrams was hired, but uh, yeah... They were working on it for a while, and it would have been something if they continued from here, but this was kind of a different film. It didn't continue from the first film. That's some of my beef with it, but it's a completely different film. It's not the Mission Impossible we saw in the previous. But that's one thing I do like about this series is that there's different directors. Up until Rogue Nation and Fallout, there was different directors, so each film had their own flavor and style and just sort of vision to it that made them each kind of unique on their own, they're kind of enjoyable on their own, and I like it, like, MI2 is the weakest Mission Impossible, it's not Mission Impossible, it's something else, it's an action movie, but it's still a damn good movie in that regard, it's entertaining to say the least, and even the weakest film in this franchise is still enjoyable, and not many other film franchises or spy films can really say that, and I think some of it is because it's different directors and, like, the story and stuff, but, um, yeah, this is very different from the other one, plus more uses of the disguise mask, but that's one thing I do like about this film uh, with this, and I also like that it's a rogue agent. Not like Jim Phelps, but somebody who's more like Ethan Hunt. It's almost like an anti-Ethan Hunt, and that's kind of cool having him go against somebody who knows his every move and how he works. And I like that. You get to see another spy who just, just basically prefers to fight people straight up prefers a gunfight rather than to use diversion and stuff like Ethan Hunt, and he uses that against him in this film, so that's pretty cool to see. And yeah, despite what you think of the film, you can't deny that motorcycle chase and some of the enjoyable moments. 
But I think it's the weakest of the film series, and for a while it was the last Mission Impossible before it kind of reignited, so to speak. They reignited the fuse in Mission Impossible 3. So let me know down in the comments, what are your thoughts on MI2? Did you like it? Some people think it's the best, or did it just kill it for you after seeing the first? What do you think about it? It was crazy seeing Tom Cruise with long hair, but that's one cool thing it started with, like the odds with him having short hair and the evens with him having long hair. But uh, yeah, feel free to comment down below. What do you think of the film? And uh, what's your favorite Mission Impossible? Like, comment, subscribe for more videos. Here are some videos you can enjoy on my channel. Feel free to follow me on the Stardust app at Fred Film Fanatic. And yeah, stay tuned for tomorrow in which I'll go over Mission Impossible 3.